What's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we're going to be breaking down the final game on the week one slate, the game between the Battle Hawks and the Renegades. We're going to be looking at this one from a fantasy lens, trying to figure out who are going to be the best start sit candidates this week. Uh, but if you guys are looking for XFL and fantasy content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be posting stuff daily, keeping you up to date on all the latest news out of the XFL. Anyway, not going to waste any more time. Let's get started right away. All right, guys. So as I said in this video, we are breaking down the St. Louis Battle Hawks versus the Dallas Renegades, the opening season game in Dallas here. And this one has the largest point spread. The Renegades right now are favored to win this game by 10 points, which I definitely think the Renegades will win this game. Uh, I, they just pound for pound are a better team than the St. Louis Battle Hawks. But I do think that this game will be a little bit more competitive than that spread indicates. Let's begin with looking at the fantasy players for the Renegades. So it's looking like all signs are pointing to a start for Landry Jones this week, which is fantastic. If he plays, he should be in your lineup. You don't really need me to say much more than that. If he doesn't play, you can start Philip Nelson as well. He definitely becomes a better option if uh, Landry Jones ends up not playing. All right. On the running back side, there's only two running backs listed on the Dallas depth chart right now. This might be a glitch. Um, there's definitely, you know, still some uh, technical aspects of the XFL that I'm sure they're figuring out. But right away, that uh, caused, you know, a bit of surprise for me with the fact that Lance Dunbar is not listed on the official depth chart for this week. It's just Cameron Artis Payne and Marquise Young. Now, Artis Payne becomes a must start and pretty much already was considering where you had to draft him and it's just based on how good this Dallas offense is going to be and that over under. But with Lance Dunbar not on the depth chart, I'm not starting him. I don't really know what that means, but uh, don't risk it. So make sure Lance Dunbar is on your bench. And I probably wouldn't start Marquise Young either, just because we don't know what the usage split is going to be. But Cameron Artis Payne must start. All right. Wide receivers already having, you know, the fun, the most fun part about fantasy where you get to maneuver around injuries. Yay. Jazz Ferguson, one of the uh, main wide receivers that a lot of people are looking at, was it do, did not practice today with a hand injury, and he might not play this week, which is definitely a problem. And even if he plays this week, hand injuries are hard to play through. So I'm officially moving him down in my ranks, and I'm trying to avoid him if at all possible this week, which means that Jeff Bidette becomes a must start. I'd be comfortable throwing in Flynn uh, Nagel as well at my flex. He should be the primary slot guy there. And with the way that they're planning on using guys in this offense, I think that, that uh, Bidette and Nagel could be very good options. Freddie Martino will take over for Ferguson if Ferguson is hurt and definitely could be a good option, but I'd probably try to avoid both right now, if at all possible, just to see how this shakes out. But jumping over to the tight ends with Ferguson hurt, that is pushing me to want to start both Sean Price and Donald Parham this week. Sean Price is listed as the tight end one on the depth chart, but that could be a formational decision as Price will likely be used as the primary blocker, although he is a decent receiver in his own right, but Donald Parham's athleticism cannot be denied, and I would be very ashamed of myself if I had him and I didn't have a better option, but I benched him and then he blew up in week one. So, I mean, if you have both of these guys... I would probably still start Parham over the Price, even though Price is listed as the tight end one, but they're pretty close right now. Let's see how this one plays out, but overall, I'm comfortable starting either of these guys, especially with all of the other news. Check out my other videos to see all the other tight ends that basically disappointed us with where they landed on the depth chart. I think Sean Price definitely sees a massive uptick in value this week, so you'll probably find a way to slot him into your team, even if you don't have Donald Parham. All right, and then from a defense side, the Renegades are favored to win by 10 at home. The Renegades have one of the better defenses in the league. You drafted them probably first overall of all the defenses, so you're going to start Dallas this week. Dallas and D.C. are the best defensive plays this week. All right, looking at the away team, starting with the Battle Hawks. Now, it isn't looking good for the Battle Hawks in terms of winning this game, but I still look for them to be pretty competitive overall. Jordan Tayamu gives you both passing and running prowess and should be a mid-tier quarterback one this week. So definitely are, am okay with starting him. Maybe not the best value in terms of like DFS play, but if you have him, he's better than your guys like Brandon Silvers and Aaron Murray this week. All right, on the running back side, Christian Michael should be the bell cow here, but in DFS, I think there's some better options this week on the slate. And considering this matchup in which the Battle Hawks may need to abandon the run early, 
Um, could be, you could spell some trouble for Michael's fantasy value this week. I'm still starting him, but I'm definitely not going to be looking to throw Matt Jones in a, on my flex spot this week. It's just too much potential for this to turn into a blowout and the run game to be rendered irrelevant very quickly. All right, looking at the wide receivers, similar to Houston, finally a wide receiver depth chart that didn't bring a bunch of surprises and was pretty easily predictable. We have LaDamian Washington at the X, Alonzo Russell at the Z, and Demorne Pearson L in the slot. Now, all of these guys are viable options this week, and I especially like LaDamian Washington. He's been turning a lot of heads in camp and definitely resembles more of that big bodied guy that Jordan Tayamu is used to throwing to in college. So, I've been pumping up LaDamian Washington for a lot. You'll be able to hear about him more on my DFS uh, show that we'll be doing tomorrow. But overall, I like all of these guys. Keith Mumphrey is playing behind Alonzo Russell, which somewhat confirms our suspicions that he isn't going to make nearly impact as some analysts expected he would. I was a little surprised by the amount of hype that Keith Mumphrey was getting, considering that we hadn't really heard too much hype from the rest of the team. And it looks like that our analysis ended up being correct. We'll see what ends up happening on the field, but overall, I like the Damian Washington, DeMornay, Pearson L, and Alonzo Russell in that order all over Keith Mumphrey this week, and the depth chart shows that as well. <laughs> all right, let's jump over to the tight ends, and let's just say, uh, we already knew the tight end was going to be one of the hardest spots to figure out. Cole Hunt looked like he was going to be one of the saving graces uh, of you know tight ends in the XFL, and then the depth chart's released, and he is the tight end three. He's behind Marcus Lucas, who was converted from a wide receiver to a tight end. He is now the tight end one. And then Wes Saxton is listed as the tight end two, relegating Cole Hunt to the tight end three. Now, I'm not starting Wes Saxton, who should be the pr primary block blocking guy, but Marcus Lucas, like I said, was a wide receiver in college, was a wide receiver in the XFL before converting to a tight end here. So... If I had to start between these guys, I would start uh, Marcus Lucas over Cole Hunt, but I prefer not to start either of them until we see how this shakes out. I know that sucks because the tight end position is so hard to figure out right now. So if you have to start one, definitely go with Marcus Lucas, but keep an eye on Cole Hunt. Don't give up on him yet. He's shown a lot through preseason that he could still be a very reliable option. And then if you can avoid it, don't start St. Louis's defense this week against the uh, potential blowout that will come uh, on behalf of the Dallas Renegades destroying their team. So just try to avoid them if you can. But overall, I think uh, this will be a little bit more competitive. I do think that uh, the Renegades will end up winning this one pretty easily, but I think the Battle Hawks can make the score look a lot closer in the end. So I would like for there to still be a decent amount of offense on both sides of the ball. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Click that link in the description if you're looking for rankings, trade advice, waiver advice, all the stuff that you need to keep your uh, fantasy teams up to date throughout the season. And click that like and subscribe button if you're looking for daily news updates around the XFL for fantasy and other news. But thank you guys again so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.